right next to the Cascadia subduction zone. Ashfall is spreading in the Cascadia volcano zone and people are asking what's happening. There was a cloud of ash spotted blowing at the peak of Mount St. Helens. This isn't just local haze. This is a reminder how unstable the zone actually is. So we're getting emails and phone calls, um, both from pilots and from the public, just saying that they're seeing an unusual amount of ash today and they wanted to know if the volcano was erupting. It's definitely not erupting. So now we'll investigate what's causing this ash, what was USGS moves before this happens, and what does this mean for millions living on the West Coast? When this first initially happened just a few days ago, Officials from British Columbia, right next to Washington, said that this ashfall was not from Mount St. Helens. In fact, they said it was from a wildfire instead. But then USGS comes out and then says this. The U.S. Geological Survey confirms high wind gusts near the mountain stirred up ash left over from the 1980 eruption. It attracted so much attention, the USGS put out an informational alert to calm any potential fears of another eruption. Here's the problem. In 2024, if you look on screen right here, they removed one of the key monitoring stations on the mountain. And then... Just weeks before this haze appeared, they started installing new detectors and we even have USGS footage of exactly when they went out there and did it. So why suddenly the change is now if everything is normal? And here's the bigger picture. Just days ago, a 7.8 earthquake struck along the Ring of Fire near Russia, the same Pacific system that ties into Cascadia. When one side of the ring shakes, scientists warn it can put stress on the rest. And it's not just U.S. sounding alarm. The British Columbia government of Canada just updated survival guidelines one month before this happened. August 2025, warning about ash clouds, toxic gases, or hearts that can travel for thousands of kilometers. Officials say respiratory problems, poor visibility, and collapsing ground are real risks. And that came out with excellent timing before this haze started to show up. So when Russia keeps getting hit along the ring of fire, that affects all the coastlines and this 600 year old volcano that was reactivated by the Pacific earthquakes is a prime example of what can happen along the entire ring of fire all the way to the U.S. West Coast. But as far as the ash fall being stirred up by the air, a lot of people question was that really the case? And when we look into this, we can see that ashfall has been there still since the 1980s, some that will be there forever. But what are the more wide reaching effects that's going to spread across 11 states and even all the way up towards Canada? So look on screen right here. This is the map of in 1980 when Mount St. Helens erupted. You can see it spread across Montana, it spread across Wyoming, spread across areas like Dakota. You can see all the areas here specifically. And also, if we go up, it went into British Columbia as well. Now, here is the USGS 2025 simulated model of what they project to see happening. You can see it spreading here all the way across going down. And this is based on if the jet stream is pushing it towards that way. But if it's going towards the middle portion, you can see some of the or middle portion of the United States or even lower portions start to see the ash fall. But just stop real quick and hit the subscribe button because we're about to give you warning signs and we're going to be watching all this activity. We're going to tell you specifically what to look for. So the volcanic warning signs that you need to look for if it suddenly gets dark and just hazy in the atmosphere. That's a warning sign that an eruption is slowly starting to happen fine gritty particles on windows or cars or even in the water supply could start to appear also a sudden smell of sulfur sharp gases in the atmosphere could start to appear if this eruption already started to slowly happen
people close to this zone in the comment section leave comments for us all so we can look through this and know what you've been smelling and hearing and everybody else in the localized area can comment as well another one is rivers or streams turning muddy or clogged this is lahars forming this is a huge warning sign that we can look at if we're looking at all these locations around the streams and rivers close to any of these volcanic areas now, sounds in increasing quakes rumbling noises cracking noises in the ground that are uncommon that you're not used to hearing if you're hearing that you need to start reporting in on this channel right now so we can get all this information to everybody so we can have that early warning system so we can know before officials probably even tell us and then why this matters all right now in this perfect timing british columbia's government just warned in august that ash gases lahars and pyroclastic flows are the biggest risk these don't stay at the volcano they move wind can carry ash into cities rivers can carry debris for miles and gases can quietly move along these areas that's why knowing the warning signs before survival mode kicks in is critical why ash fall is so dangerous close to the cascadia subduction zone these aren't just quake zones when ash mixes with water it can turn to concrete like flows swallowing bridges and highways So safe to say, if you're next to Cascadia subduction zone, rivers, streams, flows, let's cover that right now to see where this could happen at. These are all the high liquefaction zones. That the Cascadia subduction zone is hit from Portland to Seattle River Valleys, Vancouver coastlines. So take a close look at these maps. You can see the purple zone where liquefaction at landslides. Take it serious. In the most recent warning sign, NOAA getting their tide accuracy forecast much more prepared in an urgent manner. This is another sign outside the military preparing as well with their naval shipyards. After the Cascadia subduction zone executive order just this month, you need to take all these precautions seriously for the next moves that's coming. Uh, data shows that a lot of people are leaving California. Oregon is not talked about much, but in here in this comment section, I've seen people saying that They've had people working within the government who are saying that they're trying to leave by the end of this year. And that's not widespread government. It's just one local government person who reported in here from Oregon about their situation, not the at large situation. And here's another relocation detail that's very interesting. NOAA is going to move out of Norfolk, Virginia to Rhode Island by 2027. The military naval shipyard is preparing for earthquake readiness in Norfolk, Virginia. So something in Norfolk, Virginia here, what do they know? The Russian activity of earthquake has not stopped along those coastline areas. And as far as the noises, we have stuff happening on the East Coast right now as we speak, where this new fault has opened, this rupture on the ocean has uh, opened up. So all of these events right now playing out, are pointing us to the main direction of is there a global plate reorganization happening because if it is this is the shift we're going to see just like back in history all the place everything started shifting the, the volcanoes happened the tsunamis the the big changes in the heat movement and we're seeing all this start to be a real reality play out and when that happens we see a lot of movement from left west coast east coast and so we know now with the studies that is dripping down underneath the Atlantic Ocean, there's a sinking, a great sinking happening there. But what we didn't know that we now know is look on screen right here in that mid-Atlantic ridge. You can see where it's going down in that zone. And right here, what was recorded was multiple pulses, just pulsing back to back to back. That's underneath the mantle there. That's the heartbeat and the flows that are now starting to get more activity in this zone. And the more we get of that, 
it tells us the pace at which is going to start the separation, which they believe the separation is going to bring plates together. So the East Coast is going to be brought a little bit closer in as the ocean goes down into that zone here because it's subducting. And we need to hear from you on the East Coast as well. Are you still hearing these booms that USGS, the military, uh, firemen said no explosives reported? Are you hearing anything there still that is happening? People reported in to me from New Jersey, New York, Virginia, Carolina. This is going really far. Uh, and this is something that's concerning because we don't see anything happening except for drilling. And that's way up off Cape Cod, where they're looking for water underneath the ocean. So now my high priority watch zones for you, West Coast, East Coast. We also are looking at the sinking with the New Madrid. These are going to be the primary zones we're going to continue to update on. So if you want that information right away, you need to subscribe and stay around. But don't let this be hidden from you because survivability rates increase soon as you see it. And that's why you need to go watch it right now.